I thought that would be a good place to start, really, is the background and rationale. So I would ask, what was the point in doing this experiment, if there was a, in a primary objective? It was to save money while I was in New York, which was the week that I was fasting. And normally, because food in New York is so expensive, I thought, what better way to save money than to not eat anything for the whole seven days I was there? That was the primary objective. The secondary objective was actually to try to work out the kinks on a protocol that I would like to study later on to see if I can, in collaboration with a number of scientists, figure out what a signature of autophagy looks like. So if you have listened to this podcast, you've probably heard me talk about this. I think in particular, we've talked about this a lot on the podcast with Rhonda and probably with Dom probably even David Sabatini and even a couple of other podcasts that I don't think are out yet where I know we've already pre-recorded stuff on autophagy. But basically this idea of eating oneself where in a state of nutrient deprivation, the body does something that's evolutionarily quite sound, which says, look, I got to figure out a way to conserve energy here. And I also probably ought to start recycling pieces of cellular machinery that are in otherwise maybe suboptimal cells. So It would appear that the greatest way to get into autophagy is to completely restrict all nutrients, i.e. a water-only fast. Obviously, there are other things that might stimulate autophagy. Exercise probably does to some extent. Certainly, the use of rapamycin likely does, depending on how it's administered. But to really develop a signature for autophagy, to be able to draw a blood test and to look at a series of small molecules, metabolites, proteomic changes, and know that, hey this produced a positive signal in the direction that we want to go. That might allow us to have some insight into a question that I certainly don't know the answer to, and I frankly get a little miffed at the frequency with which I see people acting like they know the answer, and the question being, what's the optimal fasting protocol? So I think most people realize both scientifically and practically, that to just take an individual and constitutively restrict their calories by, say, 30 or percent or more, one, it's not clear that that actually produces a longevity phenotype in humans in the wild, and two, even if it did, it's not clear you'd want to do it. So it would seem that some amount of cycling nutrient exposure, periods of fast and famine are optimal, but I have no idea what that should be. Should that be daily intermittent fasting? Should that be prolonged fasts at some frequency? Should that be a day a week not eating? I mean, you could come up with obviously an infinite number of these things. And rather than pretend like we know what they are, I'd rather sort of work on developing a tool that we could measure proxies of the benefits of those fasts so that we might once and for all have some way to uh, at least take a more educated approach to this and potentially customize it. Because the other thing to keep in mind is we have no idea if two people would benefit equally from the same fasting protocol. So that was kind of the long-winded rationale for this type of an experiment. Now, as to why I chose to do it as a week of ketosis, a week of nothing, a week of ketosis, uh, and by ketosis, I should be clear, nutritional ketosis, which We'll explain what that means versus starvation ketosis. That was mostly self-preservation. I know from previous attempts at fasting that to go into a fast out of a high carbohydrate state is a little more painful because the body hasn't quite ramped up the uh, process of making ketones. And obviously that becomes the most important thing that's happening when you're in starvation. So that's sort of why I did it. And then as at the front end and at the back end, it was actually, yeah, this is not a scientific reason. It was, I wanted to ward against, guard against the risk that I was going to go ape shit on the refeed and just like go and eat burgers and pizza every day. So I was like, well, if I force myself to go into ketosis as I exit this fast, I will at least continue to eat in a reasonable manner. So Hence the symmetry and the nothing burgerness. 